Okay, good morning. And we have some questions here, some pre-test questions. So first, some uh, you know disclosures. And this is basically what I'll cover in this uh, CME lecture: is you know understanding the role of plaque in assessing cardiac disease, understand why plaque burden is an important concept review what we know about how we can look at plaque with CT and look at the concept of vulnerable plaque and the newer concepts and then some of the new software tools to get there. And of course like anything else it is very experimental as Joe said plaque imaging is sort of a brand new thing we're at the edge of the technology so some of the some of the things that are being described in the literature are somewhat researchy and I'm not sure how they translate in clinical practice. But let's ask a question before we start. 64 slice CT as you know it today in your practice in 2006, what can it do? Can it detect lesions? Can it detect soft plaque? Can it detect calcific plaque? Can it detect lesion severity? or only one or two above. In your practice today, what do you think you can do? Okay, good, and we'll see if this changes or if this remains the same at the end of the lecture. Plaque burden. Plaque burden is an important concept. It's a great and lofty goal for cardiac patient management. The question is, do you really think we can look at plaque burden today with a 64 slide scanner? Okay, good, and let's see how people do or do not change their mind as we go on with this lecture. So cardiac, uh, you know, plaque imaging, how important is it to look at plaque when you evaluate cardiac patients? And that brings up the real question is how do you triage patients with supposed or presumed cardiac disease? Now we know the traditional approach when patients present to the cardiologist or in the ER is we look at traditional risk factors, framing and risk factors, and all of that, and then, you know, we need to come up with some sort of treatment. And there are many different philosophies about treatment and how to approach this. These are traditional parameters that people use, you know, the risk, smoking, hypertension, family history, metabolic syndrome, But the problem is that uh, the picture isn't that simple. If you look at the evolution of uh, disease and plaque formation in a blood vessel, this is a small coronary vessel, watch this vessel. It is that uh, the vessel first sort of gets diseased in the vessel wall. I mean, it's really in the wall. And you see developing disease that we refer to as positive vessel remodeling. And only much later do you see disease inside the vessel, do you see vessel narrowing. So we're talking about a gap of sometimes 10, 15 years between the buildup disease and disease that is detectable with traditional cardiology testing like cardiac cath or stress testing. And so we all know that we have non-invasive ways to detect this early disease and one of the traditional things that we'll talk about the next talk, Bill Stanford's talk, is looking at coronary calcium in these uh, plaque, in this disease. And it's been very well publicized and we'll go through that at great length, but coronary calcium by itself is an independent risk factor that's significant, much more severe than cigarette smoking, elevated cholesterol, of hypertension. So there are some things that we know about plaque and plaque that's been there forever that's already calcified and we measure the calcium, if there's a lot of calcium, that is significant. Now the real question is what about the plaque that hasn't quite gotten there before it calcifies the soft plaque? So we're going to go back here because calcification happens sometime here by the time you may already start seeing a stenosis. So what happens in the early days before plaque calcifies? And by the way, the only way to look at that today is really with either intravascular ultrasound or CTA. And so then, uh, just as a little reminder, the concept of positive vessel remodeling is something that we radiologists are all familiar with. If you look at an aorta, this is a descending thoracic aorta. 
We are all familiar with this positive vessel remodeling as shown here. The importance of being aware of early plaque is shown here. There's a slide from the Cleveland Clinic. I think everybody that lectures has a copy of this slide. It's an older slide, but it clearly shows here an LED angiogram, which looks normal. And you see that in different locations in this LED, you have no plaque or virtually no plaque. The yellow is a normal wall. And here you have a lot of plaque, abnormal wall. This also will help you understand this huge discrepancy that if you do start doing coronary CTA, you will often, your report will say, the patient is full of disease. There are enormous amount of lesions. This is a very bad looking coronary CTA. And the cardiologist will do a cardiac calf follow-up and he will say, normal cardiac calf. And if you're lucky, they might be generous and say, normal cardiac calf, maybe minimal irregularities in the wall. And so that creates this perception of discrepancy, and there is no discrepancy at all. This is, this is the way plaque develops. So now, what does plaque look like on CT? Uh, you know, what, what does it look like? Here are some examples. This is a 3D rendering of the heart. We cut out the right ventricle, all the stuff we don't want to see. And then if you zoom it up and you get a little closer, you start seeing the little bumps on the roads, all these little bumps are positive vessel remodeling. They are early plaque development, as you see here. One, two, three little bumps on the LED. This is what you're looking for. They're often very easily visible and easy to see. This is another example of a patient. Again, this is the kind of patient who has significant coronary artery disease, depending on how you want to put it. There is significant soft plaque. The soft plaque is in gray with some areas of calcification. However, the luminogram is totally normal, the cardiac calf will be normal, the stress test will be normal. Here are some cross sections in the same patients. We're going to walk through this vessel and you'll see the cross sections of the vessel. And as you can see, there is some fuzziness surrounding this vessel. Then when you go through the lesion where there is calcium, you see some calcium there. A little bit further, a further and so forth. Here's another example just to kind of give you an example of what these things do look like. Again, this is a vessel here. You see the patent lumen. You see a large amount of soft plaque. You see some soft plaque with calcified plaque. Again, you can do some cross sections, cross sectional imaging. The thing that you've got to start paying attention to is that the soft plaque is somewhat subjective a call. And you see this fuzziness surrounding this vessel. All of that is soft plaque. That is, is, is sometimes can very easily be missed if you don't, don't look carefully. Now, the one thing that Joe alluded to, and we've got to be really careful about, is that in, the, in 2006, with 64 slice technology, we cannot quantitate coronary artery stenosis. Right, this is one of the early studies from last year by uh, Ralph from uh, Beaumont in Detroit. And you look at percent stenosis by CT and percent stenosis by uh, coronary CTA. And for example, at 60%, it's all over the map. So the best you can do, if you're ever so daring as to try to quantitate stenosis on a coronary CTA, is make sure you put the error measurement, plus minus 30%. So. If you call a 50% stenosis, it will be either 80% or 20%. You won't know. So you gotta prepare your cardiologist. That's why I personally, I never give stenosis numbers, I give ranges. I tell it this is a 20 to 70%. This is a 40 to 80%. This is a 50 to 90%. You'd be foolish to stick your neck out and try to say this is about 50%. That doesn't mean anything, because 50% could be 80%. 50% could be 20%. So you've got to be very, very careful here when you, you know, when you interpret it with today's technology. But remember though, we have one strong point. When you do coronary CTA, you are doing much more than doing a cardiac calf. You're doing a cardiac calf with IVUS, intervascular ultrasound. You're looking not only at a luminogram, you're looking at the whole vessel, the whole plaque buildup, and so the coronary CTA has enormous amount of information to give to the cardiologist and the referring doctors, much more than just a cardiac calf, much more than a stress test. So, you know, even though it's somewhat limited in how you can quantify it, there's a lot of valuable information. 
Now let's go back to triaging cardiac patients where we're talking about detecting plaque early. We all know from autopsy results that people build up plaque very early. But what's even more important is that 68% of all people that come into the ER with real cardiac chest pain, real cardiac chest pain, acute coronary syndrome, don't have significant coronary artery disease. So this creates a huge problem for us radiologists because if we're talking about using coronary CTA in the emergency room, as Joe very wisely alluded to, it's not about detecting 80-90% lesions. It's about detecting the people at risk for acute coronary syndrome and helping them triage. And what's happening in these patients is that you can have a little bit of a 